Hello, everyone. Today is going to be a very cool session. I have Polly Allen with me as our special guest. She is a CEO and founder, the CEO and founder of AI Career Boost. We're going to hear from her all that that entails. And I want you to know she really is an expert in the field of artificial intelligence. She's played a role in developing many of the systems that we are familiar with. And some of us are not so familiar with when it comes to artificial intelligence and really the this boom that we seem to be in when it comes to new tools that we can use to be curious about new things, to help us write essays that we might be stuck on and explore different travel itineraries, whatever we've got going, we can use AI for. I'm excited to have Polly really give us her insights on AI as a tool and how you all can begin to use it. Welcome to the show, Polly. Thanks so much for having me. So Polly and I met at a conference recently in real life. And as soon as I heard that she had AI as her expertise, I thought immediately, how can I get this woman on the Make Time for Success podcast? And she fortunately was also really gung-ho on the idea. So Polly, could you describe for us, um, I guess, how you got connected to the AI section of the universe to begin with? Sounds sounds good for sure. So I have been. Um, so my background is as a software engineer. Um, I did my degree um, and both my undergrad and master's in computer science many many moons ago, <laughs> over twenty years ago. Uh, even in my master's degree, I had been interested in AI, um, and at that point, we were in the middle of what's been called an AI winter. So. It was very not cool at the time, uh, and, and very different from the kinds of AI systems that we're building today. Uh, I spent ten years as a software developer, really working at you know building code coding systems. Before realizing, uh, I'm pretty extroverted for a software developer, and uh, I'm really interested too on what we should build and why. And so I moved over to the business side as a product manager, which are the people who kind of put the business case together and but also help things get built. And my most recent role in 2019, I joined Alexa AI, so the team that builds Alexa at Amazon. And we were focused on have, expanding the ways that Alexa could answer you. Um, so instead of having a hard-coded answer for a particular question, we launched the very first generative AI answers on Alexa, which we're using a similar technology to chat GPT. So people are surprised sometimes to learn that it's been around for a few years. It's not very, very brand new. Uh, and it's been really exciting to, to see this area of AI in particular explode into public consciousness <laughs> in the last six months. Um, really, really amazing just to see the attention around it and see all the new ways that people are using it, which is really, it's really mind blowing. Um, so in 2022, at the end of the year, I actually left Amazon really because I found um, that I was pretty sure AI was going to become a very big deal in society. I just didn't know how quickly. <laughs> and I had found that there wasn't a lot of diversity in the rooms where people are making decisions about these systems. Uh, as, as I'd been promoted at Amazon, I every time I went into a new meeting, there were fewer and fewer women. I was often the only woman in a room of 20, 30 men making decisions about systems that affect tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people. Mm -hmm. And it really struck me that this wasn't the way for the best AI to really, you know, come to light. Uh, and it really wasn't fair either that these really high paid and high power jobs are really seen as this realm of like only the techies can do this and only a certain subsection of the population. So I founded AI Career Boost to increase access to careers in AI and also diversity and leadership in AI companies. Um, and it's been a really exciting ride since I launched it in November. Um, I've, uh, I've been super excited with the folks who are really passionate about AI, using it in new ways, and trying to get into careers in the space. It's been uh, it's been absolutely amazing with the folks that I've uh, come in contact to with through this, uh, yourself included, Christine. 
Uh, thank you so much. And that is wonderful. So not only are you a pioneer developer and involved behind the scenes in really important and specific ways, you're also starting a movement, a new movement within the movement, which I love, which is really focused on diversity and equity, which is just so important for society, I believe, and not just the field of AI. <laughs> right. I love it. That's right. We're starting a movement. <laughs> starting a movement. Can I ask you about the word generative? Yes. Before I ask you about the people that you're working with, could you explain exactly how that's different from what was happening before and what that gives to us, what that gives to our experience and yeah. how you thought about it as you were working on developing that? Yeah, really, really great question. So AI uh, drives a lot of the systems that we're used to seeing day to day already, right? When you think about everything from your social media feed, how does it decide what to show you on Netflix, those content recommendations, that's all artificial intelligence, right? And a lot of our, what we call AI today is referring specifically to the branch of AI that looks for patterns in data and then makes a prediction or a decision based on that, right? And so generative AI is the first time that we've been using to actually generate new content, whether that's images, right? I mean, pe people are often familiar with Dolly 2 or Mid Journey, where, you know, six months ago, 12 months ago, people were blown away by being able to just describe an image and have it generate it pretty well. Um, and then uh, this new boom of generative text AI has been exciting because not only can you describe what you want it to write, but it's even able to generate things like code or translate a piece of uh, something. So this combination of like not just being able to make a single prediction, you know, number or classify something as a yes or no or give a set of recommendations, but actually like generate new content in a way that seems pretty in line with human creativity sometimes, that's the piece that's really new and exciting. Wow. 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 I am just reflecting on how I was struggling at the beginning, at the top of this uh, episode to find words. And I'm thinking that it might actually be because I'm just like, what am I describing? Where are we headed into? And I'm wondering if you had that kind of experience as a developer as a as a person who was curious about where could we take this how did you come with, up with ideas how did you nurture your own ability to create in this way hmm. oh that's a really great point yeah when when i started working with this the capabilities of the models we were working with were pretty limited so we were looking to do specific things with them and while they were a little bit capable of them and that was mind blowing at the time they were still not great Right. It wasn't something that you were going to just be like, ooh, I need to write a letter to my congressman. I'm going to start using this technology. It wasn't there yet by a long way. Um, what I found has kind of nurtured my creativity around it has been just anytime I have a task involving writing, I, I just give it a try, honestly. And it's it's um, not only helped kind of me get more creative and get more ideas about the things I can try with it. It's also really given me the sense of like a more grounded idea of what it's good for and where it's got a ways to go. Yes. Right? I've definitely found that the more people have played with it, the less afraid they are that it's going to turn into Skynet and take over the universe and do all sorts of scary things that, you know, sometimes makes its way into the headlines. Um, definitely playing around with it gives you a much better sense of its capabilities, but also its limitations. Yes. Thank you for that. I will share a story. It's a cute story, I think, of me. I've been trying to get people to at least experiment with it once. And I'm actually surprised at how many people have not experimented with it. So I want to make the assumption that many of our listeners today have not opened it up, are really the uninitiated in terms of artificial intelligence. And I'll tell you the cute story. It was with my aunt and she was kind of out of the clear blue sky describing her suspicions and fears and skepticism about the security or safety of using something perhaps that was so 
intelligent. (laughs) And Mm. I said, okay, here, give me your phone. And I opened up the app and I said, let me know something that I can help you with. And she said, well, now that you say that, uh, her husband was unfortunately in a car accident and they were having trouble with an insurance company and she Mm. was wanting to write a letter to them. I asked her quickly about what details needed to be involved. I quickly typed it in and within 30 seconds, AI had generated an extensive, detailed, professional sounding, impactful letter that would have taken me maybe three hours to write because it was that involved. I was surprised at that. I turned the phone to her and she said, give that to me. (laughs) Like, how do I get on this? You know, it was an instant transformation of a convert and it was really fun. And I think that is just the miracle of it and the 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 greatness of it and the fact that it can help you for just an everyday task and actually save you from having to do the thinking. I joke that I no longer think as much because that's the truth. It's maybe not so much a joke because if I have something to write like you, Polly, I'm going to turn to chat GPT and see what it has for me. I We'll never use it just straight out as what it it turns out, but sometimes I'll use 90, 95% of it. It's it's right. really, really helpful. So I just wanted to put that piece in in case our listeners really don't know what we're talking about quite yet and okay. are curious what they could do today after right. this episode is over. Anything to do with writing, I, I have to admit, I was really skeptical at the beginning, probably because I'd used it when it was so bad, right? That um, it sort of feels like, well, if this thing isn't a hundred percent reliable, is this going to, you know, take more time for me to check it over than it is to have just written it myself in the first place, right? And fortunately, we're having the very first studies come out where people are doing this, you know, in the lab or in controlled settings, and it's showing like, no, you can get the same quality when you're doing office writing tasks. Uh, about 37% faster on average um, in the studies that are coming out. Um, And just, you know, just for context, like when when the whole factory switched to steam power in the Industrial Revolution, they would see an increase of efficiency of about 25%. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. just to give you an idea of like, this is powerful. 37% doesn't sound like that much. It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, so do check everything. Do spend the time. But the amount of time and effort, it can it can save you on things that perhaps are not just the most enjoyable or, you know, waste a lot of your time today. Uh, it's really powerful what it can do. You just sent a shiver down my spine with those percentages because we all know, I think we all should know <laughs> how dramatic an event the industrial revolution was and the impact and the societal shifts that happened because of that and uh the the lifestyle shifts that happened right. because of that yeah right okay so let's now move towards the people that you're working with now and mm. what your vision is for what can be possible for women looking for career advancement, career development, career expansion, and making a difference in how AI continues to be brought out to the world. Yeah, 100%. So it's interesting having come from a much more technical background where I I didn't know how to program. When I wanted to get into AI more in depth in 2018, 2019, all the courses about how to work with AI and learn about AI started with step one, learn to program. So I was lucky that that didn't intimidate me and I could dive in. What I thought was crazy was I was working in a a business role as a product manager. um, And really those courses weren't at all what helped me be good at that job, right? After I left Amazon, I had a bunch of conversations with some top leaders in AI and asked them, hey, for a product manager, project manager, um, anyone working with developers in this space, 
do you really think they need a computer science degree? And often at the beginning of the conversation, they would say, oh, yes, you know, it's really helpful. But then if I pressed them and said, like, why, though? Because you don't, you don't need them to write code. They don't have to read code. You know, they, they just need a common language with the developers. Um, by the end of the conversation, every single one had been like, you know what? You're right. And actually, my best product manager was a social sciences major, right? And it really is the, all of those um, roles that have more to do with people and relationships and, and thinking about the benefits that the software delivers. Um, all of those aren't necessarily best filled with people with, with technical backgrounds. And we can definitely increase the diversity by finding the, the folks who do that part well and then just giving them the tools to collaborate and problem solve and work with these more technical teams. But it, it can be a little more top down explaining the concepts instead of them having to glean it bottom up by like going back to get a master's in data science um, or something like that, right? So the courses I teach as part of AI Career Boost really focus on getting folks the, the essential terms and understanding they need. Um, without having any technical background. There's no coding required at all. Um, in my most recent six weeks program, we're focusing on um, giving folks the, the skills they need to lead and succeed as AI product leaders. And as part of it, we actually build a generative AI prototype. So with no code tools. And the idea is you can actually build a, a tool, whatever tool you want, just using tools like ChatGPT and some no code tools. So instead, it's been never been more accessible to start building your own products. You can kind of just ask ChatGPT, act like a recommendation engine inside of Netflix and tell me what, what movies I'd like from this set of movies. And uh, while they're not as um, robust and high end as the existing production AI systems, it's absolutely a wonderful way to build a prototype, get something working, uh, show it around, maybe get some funding if you're a startup founder. So that's that's what we've been focusing on is really increasing um, people's ability to be, be a part of organizations that are building AI tools and, and products um, by focusing on leadership roles and, and getting uh, startups up to speed and stuff as well. That is fantastic. Is there some sort of exclusivity about who gets to do what? I'm thinking you you know you're you're very positive, you're very much a leader, you're very much creating a movement. I'm wondering if there's pushback from people who are maybe saying, "No, no, you really need this, you really need that. It's just us." Are you mm -hmm. sensing that with the work a that you're doing? Bit. I I think I don't even know if it's necessarily intentional. Um, but I do think like I found it, we call, I called it AI Career Boost a little bit because I thought it feels like there's some gatekeeping going on around these careers. And you just, some people just need a little boost over that gate, right? Let's, let's provide that. Um, the, there's, there's definitely some folks who get a little defensive saying like, well, well, you can't have people who don't know anything technical doing X, Y, Z. Um, but once you explain, like, I'm not talking about getting people to be data scientists, or engineers, right? That those definitely have, you know, different requirements, but that the business functions are, that that help and enable them and work around them, um, that even lead those initiatives, um, that they don't they don't necessarily have to have that level of technical depth and detail to do those jobs really well, right? So that's that's really the goal, um, and honestly, I think most of the time there hasn't been that much pushback. It's actually really that folks that are so educated and have been in, you know, this soup of acronyms for, you know, years have kind of lost that ability to explain this stuff in English. <laughs> so, so that's really where I hope I can provide like a translation layer for people and give them the tools that they need at the right level. I love it. You're the perfect person for this, I believe. <laughs> Thank you. I have at least two more questions. One is, now I, I'm going to forget it because I am not a robot and not artificially intelligent. <laughs> you're proving uh, it. You're proving right, you're exactly. not, This is a real AI. interview. <laughs> okay. So my thought was that typically in these podcast interviews, I start with 
people's stories and the obstacles and the internal obstacles that have happened. And I think we kind of managed to skip by that, but I want to return to that because you left what I imagine was a very comfortable, high level, interesting job at Mm -hmm. a stable company to go off on your own. Could you describe that experience and what helped you to make the leap to say, you know what, this is the time, this is the person, this is the space and I better do this now? Yeah. um, Really, really great question. Um, For sure. I mean, I think I, like you said, I was, it was a stable company. And I remember in November, 2022 was right around things started to look really scary for big tech. Uh, It was interesting. I, I left in November and I think it was three days later, they had the layoffs at Amazon Alexa and all these folks came to me going, Oh no, were you laid off? I was like, no, no, I left them. It wasn't a mutual breakup. It was, (laughs) but, um, but I had really gotten to a point where week after week, I was finding it was grinding at me a little more that, you know, consistently, I'm the only woman in the room. Consistently, um, I bring up concerns about things and they get kind of dismissed. And it seemed sometimes at least like there was some gender bias behind which concerns get listened to and which ones don't, right? I would see candidates coming from non-traditional backgrounds not getting interviews or getting dismissed early. And it had just become that thing where, you know, you sort of get almost the Sunday scaries. It wasn't really scaries, but I just was realizing I wasn't looking forward to going to work on Monday anymore. Um, So even though it was a little bit scary to take a leap at that, at that moment, sometimes you just know, you're like, no, I'm just, this part of my journey is done. Right. And uh, it also just seemed whatever it was that called to me was like, no, it's going to be too late if you start later. Right. Mm. And I, I still am like, whoa, it's a little creepy <laughs> <laughs> to find out later <laughs> that, um, that it was really, really timely that I left and almost immediately chat GPT kind of blew up in the public consciousness. Right. Um, so I do think there's a little bit of, of knowing yourself and trusting your gut that goes into it. I think you've got to listen to those, um, those inner voices that are telling you, that are whispering at you uh, that it's, uh, it's when it's time to make the leap. I love that. I love that piece of advice. Everyone remember that. Listen to your inner knowing always, mm. right? That, mm. that, that little voice really does have your back. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Now the second question, which I do remember is for the women who are listening to us, mm. what kind of first steps might you have for them and sort of guidelines or yeah things that they can start off with totally so i do have a a free ai learning guide um so it's and i think you're you are gonna give the url right yes the (laughs) url is make time for success podcast.com slash ai again make time for success podcast.com slash ai Go ahead. Perfect. Yeah. So it's got it's a list of resources, places to start. No technical background required. Um, my very favorite is a YouTube series called Making Friends with Machine Learning. And it's done by Cassie Korzakoff, who is the chief decision scientist at Google. Uh, she did this course for Google employees internally, so business users who weren't necessarily technical. And it's a really entertaining course. Uh, She talks about wine. It's really, really fun. She makes it really, (laughs) um, really entertaining. It's about six hours overall. If you don't have time for the whole thing, even just the first hour or two, really gives you a sense of what's going on under the hood. And again, can help demystify, make you a little less afraid of using these systems and kind of getting the idea of how they work. I literally think if there was anything that was going to make me afraid, I would call Polly and ask her to <laughs> make me not afraid. I think you're perfect for this. So Polly, I'm so glad you came on the show. Thank you so much for describing what you've been through, what you're creating and where people can go with it next. I really appreciate your time and energy. Oh, thank you so much, Christine. Yeah. I hope, uh, I hope your, you, your listeners will join me on the journey. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, could you tell our listeners, speaking of that, how they can stay in touch with you? So please feel free to um, join my mailing list. So that's at aicareerboost.com slash interested. 
I also have uh, descriptions of the courses that we have available up on the website there. All right. Woohoo. All right. Here we go for a whole new world. Follow Polly for more. Try out Chat GPT if you haven't. Yeah. Listen to that inner voice because that's the original intelligence. <laughs> you always right. have it. The, the non artificial intelligence. Correct. Right? The genuine <laughs> intelligence that we all have. And let's all help each other rise. Thank you so much, Polly. You're amazing. Thank you, Christine. Amazing. All right, everyone. I will see you next week. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Time for Success podcast. Bye-bye.